Welcome to our ninth country for our trip, which is Israel. We are so excited to be here for the next couple of weeks exploring the country. We flew in to Tel Aviv, where we then got a rental car and drove across the country to the Negev Desert. Absolutely beautiful. We'll give you a tour of that space. But we're starting the morning early at 8 a.m. out here at Masada. It's where a group of Jews took refuge after 70 AD when the Romans destroyed the second temple in Jerusalem. They came here and hid out on the top of this rock. They had a fortress up here and they stayed up here for a long time while the Romans came after them. So today there's two options. We can either take a tram up or we can do a hike. We are going to do the hike. It's called the snake path which just snakes its way up the mountain. Then later today we are going to be going to the Dead Sea which is very close to here. So we've got a big day packed full of exploring Israel. We're about three quarters of the way up right now. This mountain is like a pretty easy hike, other than the fact that there is a ton of elevation. I didn't check to see how much elevation we were supposed to gain, but so far we've gone up 800 feet. I guess there's still another 600 to go, but it's not like a slow incline. It's a pretty quick incline here. But the view up here is unreal. The landscape looks crazy. It looks like it'd be Mars or something. But I can just imagine the people up here would have such a good viewpoint of everything in the surrounding area, but I can only imagine how terrifying it would have been to watch the Roman army marching towards Masada. But now we're gonna walk around the complex. It's huge up here, and there's a lot of old ruins. Also, there are ruins here from King Herod building castle of sorts up here that they then inhabited. So we're gonna go walk around the ruins and check it out once we've taken a breather and cooled down a bit. Herod the Great is the one who built this entire complex. So our main question was how on earth did people survive up here on top of this mountain plateau with the Dead Sea next to it? The answer to that question is these storerooms that we're standing in right now. So these large storerooms, they somehow brought up tons of food up here, enough food to last for years. They would have had like wine, dates, things like that, that they would fill up in these storerooms. I and mean, that's how they were able to sustain life up here on top of a mountain, which is truly an incredible feat. So right behind me is the Roman ramp that the Romans built in 73 AD that ultimately led to the Romans taking over Masada from the rebels. It's incredible to see how much work would have had to go into this and I cannot imagine how terrifying it would have been to live up here and watch this ramp being built day by day. It's so crazy that it's still just sitting here for us to see today. And that wraps up our time here in Masada. We're gonna hike back down the mountain and we're gonna drive just a few minutes over to the Dead Sea. We're going to go float and relax after our hike this morning. Right now we are out at Ein Bokek, which is a super popular place to visit if you're coming out to the Dead Sea. There's a lot of hotels, there's a lot of different like spa areas, and then obviously there's a lot of beach area on the Dead Sea itself. So what most people do is they go over to those beaches. However, we learned that not too far away from those beaches is there's actually all these different salt formations. You're just able to walk all around them and they are absolutely beautiful out here. And then after we get done checking out this area, we're gonna head back on over to the beach and spend some time actually floating in the Dead Sea. There are no like showers or amenities over here and we were told that after you get done swimming in the Dead Sea you definitely want to shower off to get off all that salt so we're gonna to wait to do too much swimming until we get back over there that way we're able to shower off as soon as we are done floating in the Dead Sea. So this is absolutely crazy it feels like someone is holding me up I'm not even trying to be like this <laughs> I'm just like a bobber right on the top of the water it's so crazy. This is it. <laughs> so relaxing. So chill out here. Hardly another soul out here. I'm content. 
All right, well, I'll try to drag her on the water. That way we can head on over the beach. I just licked my lips and they are so extremely salty. I feel like I just licked a block of salt. Hydration, cannot stress how important it is here. The sun is just blazing up above. It's so dry, so salty. We bought a pack of six of these at the store and I'm so glad we did because we are chugging water. It's so important here. So unfortunately here, just like about everywhere else, there's like a lot of garbage kind of along this area. However, what is kind of neat is there's like three different chairs that are just being like dissolved by the salt. So the first one is right here and it's like almost completely buried. And then there's a second and a third one that looks like it just got put out. I did see that the Dead Sea is quickly drying up and it's mostly because they've like rerouted a lot of the Jordan River. So they're using it for irrigation and for the cities now. So a lot of the water that used to flow into the Dead Sea from the Jordan River is no longer flowing in. And so the Dead Sea is shrinking quickly because of that leaving behind all the salt and that's why the chairs are getting like all but buried in the salt. So the reason the Dead Sea is so salty is all the rainwater. Uh, it's kind of like acidic and so it dissolves a lot of the natural sodium and then it flows down into the Dead Sea and then because the Dead Sea does not have an outlet all that salt just sits right in the Dead Sea and then as the water evaporates which it evaporates pretty quickly here because of how hot it is it leaves behind only the salt making it super salty here. It's actually about three times more salty than the ocean. This is such a weird feeling like I can just float here without any like without trying at all like I'm just floating like I can't even get myself to sink like, I can't I have heard though that there are still people that drown here because if you try and swim like normal like face first your feet can get like on top of you and then your face is like stuck down in the water and it's hard to get I'll flip back around, like even just there, like I'm in super shallow water, but it felt really hard to get flipped back up that my face wasn't in the water. So even though it's like hard to sink on your back, people still drown here because of that. I would suggest not wearing sandals that you never wear walking around and then getting like open sores because it really stings in the salty water. We're gonna head back to our Airbnb, to our little desert oasis. We just made it back to our Airbnb, got all showered up, ready for the evening, and we are now eating some noodles. So unfortunately, Israel has been super expensive already. We're already pretty much over budget, and we're on day two of about 20. So we were trying to find different ways to kind of cut down on the cost, and one of those ways is to not eat out for every meal. We've eaten out a couple times already, and the average price per meal when we've eaten out is like $15. So if we were to eat out twice a day, every single day, we're next 18 days that's gonna add up to be a lot of money so we are going to do a little bit of backpacker budgeting and do some noodles over the next couple of days what's funny is even this cup of noodles seems expensive after being in Egypt for the last week because in Egypt we we're buying ramen noodle packages for like 20 cents or something and this was like a dollar 15 and actually in Egypt when we were getting those ramen noodles that was the first time I'd actually had ramen noodles one of the reasons why we never did like this before like Costa Rica or any of the other places we were visiting is because I'd never had ramen noodles and I didn't know they actually kind of taste pretty good and then I had quite a few while we we're in Egypt because we were a little bit worried about eating the food there and they're actually really good so I think we're eating a lot of ramen noodles over the next eight months and yes I I know these are not healthy and I know they're not actually that good, but when you can save $14 per meal, you save $14 per meal. That's the thing about travel. It doesn't have to be expensive. You can do it for cheap. You can find ways to cut out costs and take really bad flights that you're awake all night for and save over half on the price of a plane ticket. You just have to be willing to give up some luxuries in life. Before we call it for the night, I wanted to give you a quick tour of our Airbnb because we found it here in the Negev Desert, only about an hour away from the Dead Sea and Masada. Super cozy. So I'm going to give you a quick tour of our place before we go to bed for the night because we have a big, big day tomorrow. So here we have the kitchen. I absolutely love when there's like a little kitchen set up so that we can try to do a little meal prep ourselves. And then over here, there's a whole little coffee station which is absolutely the way to my heart they have an espresso machine which i've never used before but that's really awesome too and it makes great espresso in it so that's been really yummy we have a little workstation which is great because we're trying to get some work done on our laptops here big cozy bed we have a little sitting area where jordan is enjoying his noodles which he just discovered ramen
ramen noodles. Comment below if you've never had ramen noodles before, which I feel like is not most of the population. Then over here, we have a place to dry our clothes because there is a washer machine, which is an absolute lifesaver when you're traveling for a year, then you don't have to go to a laundromat and you can just get some laundry done at your stay, which is what we're currently doing. And then a nice, beautiful bathroom. Super appreciate bathrooms that are really nice now after being on the road for a few months. And there's a really cozy sitting area outside. It's dark now, but one of my favorite things here has been to watch the sunset over the desert. It's truly like nothing else. We'll leave a link down below so that you can find this day too if you're looking to stay in this area. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it and hope it helps you planning your trip. Stay tuned as we're getting up early tomorrow to hit the road to go to the other end of Israel in the north to the Sea of Galilee as we explore that area. See you there.